Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number eight, we'll be looking at creating rooms to act as the levels in our game. We'll also add the code necessary to move the camera along with the player. In platformer games, levels are important. They provide a specific challenge to overcome. They usually have a theme, either visually or mechanically. For instance, one level might have a lot of enemies, while another level may have a lot of complex jumping puzzles. Usually, levels start simple, but get more complex and difficult as the game goes on. First, let's create three rooms. I'm going to call them Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. Each room has its own set of code, a start and a loop, which means you can customize the rooms as much as you need. However, since the rooms are rather empty, they're not going to do anything yet. Let's decorate level one properly. Since we have a lot of setup done already in the game start, let's simply move it over to the level one. Highlight everything in the game start and press Control X to cut. Inside the level one start, head down to line three here and press Control V to paste. Now, you should have no code in the game start or loop. And the level one start should contain all the code you did have in, in the game start. If we try to play our game right now, it's completely empty again. That's because the computer doesn't know to automatically go to the level one room. We have to tell it that. Luckily, we can do so in just one line of code. In the game start, type set underscore room, and inside the brackets and apostrophes, type level one. This is very much like adding a sprite. We want to look at our assets over here and pick one of the rooms we want to access. And if we hit stop and play, your game comes back. When the game starts, it runs this line of code. Next, it runs the level one start, which sets up all the objects you created earlier. Now that we've got our room working, let's expand it. In our for loop that we created in the previous lesson, we created five floors. Let's increase that amount to 10. And now you can see, like it did before, the floors extend past the right side of the screen. And we can move between them, but we can't actually see them. The next step will be setting the camera to follow along with the player. In order to do that, we'll need to adjust one thing in the start. When we create the player named Astro, we'll need to add a self dot in front of each line here. That's because if we want to use this player object in the loop, we need to set it with the self dot. In the loop is where we'll be setting the camera position. And we can do that with one more line of code. We say set underscore camera and inside the brackets, it's going to ask us for a position. Here, we need to tell it the X position and the Y position of where we want the camera to move to. And if we want it to follow the player, all we have to do is tell it to be where the player is. So we tell it Astro's X position 
and Astro's Y position. And just like that, you'll see the effect immediately. The camera moves along with the player. Now you'll notice that when we reach the edge of the screen here, we have a lot of black space. That's because the background is only so big. We can make it bigger by changing its scale. Inside the level one start, let's change how big the forest sprite is. We can change it by modifying the scale X and scale Y. First, we type forest because that's the object we want to modify. Then we say scale X, make sure it's a capital X. This scale is what we call a multiplier. It starts off at the number one. That's the base scale of the object. If we want to make the scale bigger, we want to use a number that's bigger than one. For instance, the number two will be twice as big as number one. If we want to make it smaller, we use a decimal. So 0 0.5 will be half the size of the scale. Since we wanted it to be bigger, let's try the number two. Let's also change the scale y. It can also equal two. That way it doesn't look stretched out. And just like that, it looks much better already. Now an important thing about levels is that they have a beginning point and an end point. Right now, level one has a beginning point, but it doesn't have an end. Let's add another class. I'm going to call this class Castle. We'll also find a sprite for it in the Asset Store. Open up the Asset Store and look for Castle Gray. I'm going to name it Castle and it'll show up in our sprites list as castle.png. Next, I want to actually add the castle to the room. I'm going to add the castle last after all the other objects have been created. I'm going to call it endpoint because it will be the endpoint in my level and it's going to be a castle class. I'm going to put the sprite on it. It's going to be a castle.png And now I've got to figure out the position for it. I want it to be right at the end of my line of floors created by my loop. Now we could guess and check and try to figure out the answer that way, but we could also do a little bit of math to find where the right position should be. As a comment, I'm going to do the little math here. 210 plus nine times 90 equals 210 plus 810. Finally, 210 plus 810 equals 1020. So I know the endpoint dot x should be about 120. Let's see if that works out. That's almost perfect. We'll need to move it a little bit to the left and then a little bit up so it looks like it's on top of the platforms. Let's reduce this 
to 950 and let's increase its Y by about 40. There it is. That looks great. If we want to move to the next level, we need to check if the player has reached that castle. The easiest way to do that is with a collision check. Inside the player loop, let's add another collision check. We've got this collision with the floor and this collision with the enemy. Let's add one down at the bottom. So we want to say if get collision between self and any kind of castle Let's move on to the next level. So we'll say set room level two. And you see, once I collide with the castle, the screen goes black. That's because level two has no code inside it yet. So you might be wondering how we might get to level 3. If the player's collision with the castle always brings us to level 2, how can we ever get to level 3? One way we can accomplish this is by telling it the castle which level it should go to. Inside the castle start, let's add a variable. We can call this variable level to set, as in which level we're going to set when the player collides with it. This variable is going to be different than a boolean or an integer. It's going to be a string, like a string of letters. In order to make a string, all we have to do is put it inside a set of apostrophes, like so. A string is just another kind of variable that you're going to see very often in coding. You can change it and use it just like any other variable. Inside the player loop, let's make some small changes to that collision check we just added. First, let's move this code down a little bit. Next, we're going to use another collision check to get the information about the castle we're colliding with. So once again, we're going to say something like this castle equals get collision between self and castle. Now that we have access to this castle's information, we can also access the variables inside it, like this one. So instead of setting the room to level 2, what we're going to do instead is say this castle dot level 2 set. This will work since the set room is looking for a string, a word inside those apostrophes, and level to set, that variable, is a string. So in place of that level to set, we'll have level 2 instead, and the set room will become level 2. Now there's one thing we have to change before it'll work, and I'll show you what happens. When we reach the castle, we get a lot of errors about the castle object not having an attribute level to set. What's going wrong here is that we're trying to access the information inside the castle from another object. But in order to do that, we need to have the word self in front of it. So this needs to be self dot level to set. With that in place, the room goes to level two, just like that. Now say you want to change this level to set variable. Well, you can do that 
whenever you create the castle. If I wanted to say go to level 3 instead, all I have to do is say endpoint dot level to set equals level 3. You would do so if you wanted to move from level 2 to level 3, or maybe there's a secret passage that leads from level 1 to level 3. That's up to you as you design the levels. For now, I'm going to leave this at level 2. If you wish to add a secondary castle to your level 1, please do so. For now, that's the end of the lesson. The next lesson will be another challenge lesson. I'll see you there.